Apart from the most dedicated hill walkers and mountain climbers, taking the first step from level ground towards that distant peak high above is a daunting one. Especially so if the summit is shredded in mist or a low hanging cloud. Experienced climbers limber up beforehand, stretching muscles in preparation for the challenge to come. They wear proper footwear and clothing and carry all the essentials to survive a multitude of emergencies. But then experienced walkers, well, we just plod right on up there. Our clothing and footwear is often not suitable for the terrain or abrupt change in weather conditions. We haven't even thought of that, didn't have what's suitable or regarded it as maybe a little pretentious. Setting out to deal with the past can be a daunting and fearful experience. It's new ground for us. We haven't walked this path before. We're unsure of what dangers may lurk by the wayside what complex issues and challenges we'll face. We don't know who our partners on the journey will be, or if we can trust or rely upon them. As we take those first few steps up the incline, muscles begin to protest. They tell us that this is a madness, a foolish enterprise to conceive of. We try to shut out these voices, but they persist and also change our arguments. It's now a dangerous adventure, the day is not right for it, and it should at least be postponed. You suddenly think to yourself that there are many other challenges you are better at, more suited to, more interested in. So why bother with this one? You don't need to climb the mountain. Sure, you can always hear from the others what it was like. There's no need for everyone to climb it. Sensible, rational arguments. They take on a more powerful resonance once the others pull away from us. When that burning sensation just under the breastbone threatens to turn into a furnace. When our breathing comes in strangled gasps. It is in those moments that the journey becomes a very painful, lonely, bleak experience. With no evidence that the reward to come will compensate for the effort put in. The simple thing is to say, the past the past, forget about it, draw a line under it, or why me, why should I bother, leave it to someone else, I'm no good at it, it'll be too much hassle, will cause upsets in my own life, in my family, and in the community. But the good news is, it doesn't have to be like that. Don't start with the highest and most difficult plan, attempt the smaller ones first. Learn from others about the difficulties you may encounter, the height, the distance, the estimated time taken. Check out some appropriate clothing and footwear. No need to go over the top though. You probably have it all in your closet. And take a map. Look around you. Get your bearings. I realise it will not be easy. I need to engage with others and encourage them to come along with me. And we all need to be aware of each other's limitations in order to make progress, however slowly. There are some who will not want to come with me. They may be fearful or lack confidence, and that's okay. But when others see you take that first step, it encourages them to do likewise. Carry some supplies with you. Butter and a bar of chocolate will suffice. It will slake your thirst and provide energy when most needed. And the stop will allow you to catch your breath. Walk with others of the same general fitness as yourself. Don't try to keep pace with the more experienced and practiced. Slow down to assist those who are slower or give yourself a little bit of a push to keep up with those just a little faster. You'll be surprised how quickly your body adapts as long as you don't overdo it. In other words, pace yourself. There's still no guarantee your muscles will not ache or that your lungs will not protest a little, but not as loudly and their cries will be drowned out by the other voices around you, including those of the new companions you meet along the way. Sometimes the difficulties in dealing with the past cloud our original intention and obscure our goal. 
we can often feel cut off from close family members and friends of long standing. We begin to doubt ourselves and what we've set out to achieve. And then, just a simple word or thought or small action breaks through our confusion and we feel exhilarated, reassured and once more encouraged to continue. As you make the descent, take time to look around. Stop what need be. Look back to where you started from to measure the progress you've made. View the landscape from a new perspective and the summit now much closer and clearer. And when you eventually reach it, bask in your achievement. But be careful. Most accidents on mountains occur during the descent. Don't get reckless. Remember how careful you were on the way up. And don't scorn or mock those still claiming. Encourage them. <laughs> when dealing with the past, there is no one prescribed way for everybody. Each of us has to discover it for ourselves. Only in that way can it ever be authentic. And we need to remember how difficult it has been for us so we shouldn't push others faster than they want to go. Some may set out on the journey only to turn back. Others may stall for a while before being able to go on. Sometimes all we need is to pause for a moment, perhaps to tell others of the struggle it has been to get this far, or even for ourselves, to realise the distance we have travelled. And the reward often comes unexpectedly. Turning up on a day when you weren't sure you were going to walk at all, when despite the weather forecast there are blue skies, sunshine and a fine view and a clear air. The pain of the previous day's struggle is forgotten and you're glad you decided to walk and you keep walking. <laughs> <laughs>